Do you remember vlog episode number 39? It's lots of people's favourite, actually. A Burgundy Porsche Boxster. The title was Saving a Boxster. Saving a Boxster 2. <coughs> Welcome to Aditas.
welcome back. Wash decontaminated inside, ready for some paint inspection and polishing. So the burgundy red box I talked about, that was actually posted August 2017. It's mid-July 2020 now, so three years ago. And still, I have two, currently I have two boxsters, this included, um, in the diary off the back of that video. So it's still active, it's still getting views, and it still draws in lots of attention and work. Off the back of the RS5, the Navara Blue, which was two videos ago. Since then, I've had three RS5 inquiries. I myself, whatever I search for, YouTube's algorithm generates more similar stuff that, hey, look at this, this might be relative, relative, relevant content that you'd like to see. Also, so actually, as a platform, as a marketing media platform, or a social hub, YouTube is fantastic. I will just say, though, um, that as much as I want to help the community, and, and I do help, where I can, I can't help everyone individually with your pricing structure or your websites or how to draw more marketing or pull in more work. But numerous times I get phone calls, uh, Jim, love your work, huge inspiration, great, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to do some videos on YouTube now myself, I'm just not getting the views, how can I, how can you help? How can I get more views on my channel? So it's a case of, okay, well, cool, well done. Um, how long have you been detailing? How long have you been established? Well. 14 months, 15 months, and that's, a lot of the time, that's the answer. It's a saturated industry now. Lots of new people have started up. That's not a long time. It really isn't a long time. Before I picked this camera up and I did YouTube, I was working for seven years building a social media platform on forums, on car forums, on Instagram and Facebook. So before I even did the first vlog, 001 on the E46 M3, I had six and a half thousand followers on Instagram. So I had an audience to say, what do you think of this? Something new, check it out. You may like, you may like it, you may not. And nearly three years later, it's been a great success. So there isn't an answer I can say to directly help. Really, it is just the long game. Uh, nothing happens overnight. That's about all I wanted to say, I think. So, <clears throat> Lapis Blue Boxster. It is 2001, it's 19 years old. It has, you've got a dirty lens. I've sprayed you during the wash. It has 65,000 miles on the clock. So it's a low mileage example for the age. Immediately I can see signs of repair work, body shop doings, um, resprayed panels, damage really. It's not here for the white detail, it's here for a minor correction. And of course there's limitations as to what a minor correction can achieve. It can achieve great things, uh, but it, it can't achieve miracles. And there is, as you'll see, there are deep scratches, there are scuffs. Um, I've been given a budget to work to. The vehicle itself, uh, 2001, it's a 986 Boxster, not an S, just a Boxster. Uh, first generation, I'd say, I don't know, five and a half thousand, six thousand pound. So to warrant 1500 quid, two grand, three grand on a full detail, it just doesn't justify it. So what we have opted for is a tailored package for a two stage minor paint correction to lift and enhance the majority. An interior once over, uh, a light valley, if you will and upgrade ceramic paint protection. What you will have just seen is the box to badge being removed. There's funny goings on here. Obviously the reason behind taking the badge off is so this can be polished as one and the dirt and the ingressed dirt around the badges and the swirls underneath can be polished throughout. But the B and the R, they've had adhesive stick the corners down. I'm sure if you're a Porsche owner, you'll know a wash mitt, they can snag, they can lift with the wash mitt and you can get strands of material caught under there. So someone, somewhere, there's a giveaway sign here that there's glue. Um, it's stubborn stuff, so. I won't be fully able to correct the actual outline, but that's not a problem because a new badge will be going directly on the top. It's just as a whole, it'll be much cleaner. And the icing on the cake for the whole job. Did a lapis blue boxer of this generation a long time ago, um, seven years ago. There's a cracking photo of it, I remember. I had the wheels refurbished. As you can see, a lot of damage, lots of room for improvement. 
but there are some battle wounds and scars and chips, as is going to be. The owner of the car um, is actually a father-son relationship. It's a car that between them, I believe, they've purchased to relive some of their youth and the dad's early days with driving with the son, and it's a driver's car, it's a manual, it's a sun top-down summer car that they can both enjoy. They've only had it for three weeks, four weeks. It's just returned from Porsche from a full service. And now, and it's had the wheels refurbished as well. I shan't be touching the wheels, they're not being done. And it's here, as I say, for three days, just to reinstall, reinstate some love back into it. As I say, it won't be perfect. There will be damage and there'll be deep scratches left behind. There's a deep one here. And that's quite impressive as well bird bomb etching, bird poo left baked on in the sun. Front bumper's pretty hammered, lots of chips. Oh yeah, the weird, the weird goings on back here, I forgot, in the debadging process. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about the debadging process and the how-to behind the scenes, there is a link up top somewhere, or maybe I'll put it down below in the description for a more in-depth badge removal process. Okay, so factory location. But look an inch below that. Here, see the outline? That's the B. This is really difficult on camera. You can definitely see there has been, there's the S, <laughs> T, E, R. Someone has put one down here, which is far too low. Um, so it's been replaced, removed, possibly repainted. I'm yet to put a paint depth gauge on the car, but visibly straight away there are telltale signs to me to say this has had paint. There's bits in the paint on this top near side, offside wing, dry on the edge here. Oof. Deep marks again. Mm -mm -mm. I should be able to get some nice 50-50s. The hood is in good shape, that's one thing. This is a replacement hood for this vehicle. The year of this vehicle would have actually had the plastic Perspex screen, and this is off a 986 Mark II, I believe. This is a Mark I. Uh, okay, last area before I get cracking on the polishing. Uh, a lot of residue in previous tape there. That's nasty, there's damage on the bumper. It's just tapped something there, caught something. All these streaky bits on the back and the lower portions, all this stubborn, tarnished, something that's not washed off or clay bar hasn't removed. It's, I think, pretty much it's just soot. It's just deposits that have come out of the exhaust and sort of welded themselves onto the paint. It is polishable, it will be improved. That's odd though. That's odd though, that looks like a paint defect or something. And the trim here itself is looking a bit yellow and tarnished. I say that word a lot, but pretty much is just tarnished. So that will be polished up by hand. It's these sort of jobs that are most satisfying, be quite enjoyable. It's not the most extravagant, most expensive car in the world. To somebody it's their pride and joy, and there's more turnaround available. It's not a two-year-old AMG Mercedes, which is pretty clean already. It's used, it has history, it's probably had five plus owners in this time. And the Maroon Boxster, which is the Vlog 39, the Maroon one, I will actually play the owner's reaction back on this episode now, because as the reactions go, it was most rewarding and they were most impressed. Yes. Is it? Oh, I say. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, fucking hell. Right, where's that car? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's that, amazing. That is, I, I mean, obviously, it's, I'm it's for... brought the depth of the colour mm. to life somehow. It's a whole new colour, isn't it? It's a new car, isn't it? Look at it. Oh, it's amazing. That is truly fantastic. Truly, truly amazing. What? Yeah. I've got grease bulbs coming through there. Eh? I've got grease bulbs coming through there. <laughs> This is well and speechless.
testing on the rear deck here, looking nice, very much improved. But interestingly, I've used Kamikaze wall on the LHR15, and I was using microfiber on the three inch of the Mini. But look how much nicer where the wool has been, has finished, compared to the edges where the microfiber has been over the top. So, wall finish, microfiber finish. There are some bits left in here as well. So switching out to Kamikaze Collection's three inch wall to see if we get on with this as well. In measuring some of the paint thicknesses, a lot of it as expected has had paint, in fact, I stand here now looking at the way and you can see there's little divots and fish eyes and bits here. On the top ledge here as well there's lots of noise let's say. Uh, look. But the door looks to be original. And this lot much thicker. Not a good finish, the bonnet. Hoping to improve this quite dramatically. Look how obviously it's scratched and damaged, but it's flat. There's lack of clarity there. Starting with the edge work, normally I'd do the bulk, tidy it up on the edges, and then pick up the ivory for the very intricate spots. But because the larger oscillation of the five inch over the smaller eight millimeter throw is it, because this is clearing up better and cleaning, finishing better, sorry, I'll do the edge work first before I go on to the big work because this itself I'll be able to overlap I'll be able to overlap some of the areas this has been used and actually semi-refine it. I know it's as mad as that sounds, but if I do this first and then the edges, I'm left with the damage induced from the three inch, whereas this first, then this, this sort of clears it up a bit. I suppose we've got a proven point there. Edge work done, so I'll buff some of that off. So before condition, as we go to the sides, you can certainly see it's uh, enhanced nicely. I can now pick up the big, big work in the middle, but with the lights now thrown into the mix, it's actually not that wall because it's so floppy. It doesn't actually quite truly hit the very size because it sort of splays up. Microfiber is pretty true and tight, but uh, slightly marred from the wall pad. I bet this very bottom corner needs work still. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Very much work in progress, I'm rambling I know, but it's sort of like I'm piecing it all together as we work. The finish is a lot cleaner after the five inch pad. I'm still concerned about these edges. I might drop back onto the microfiber pad to be able to get tight, tighter to the edge there. But certainly the five inch areas have refined or finished down nicer. That's with the Kamikaze wool cutting pad. I'm experimenting again this week with HC4000 Zweiser. Oops, Zweiser, Z Visor. Zwei, Su. It's going to be hard to let some of these deeper marks go, to be honest. It's always the case of reminding yourself that you're being commissioned for three days' work and it's a minor correction, not chasing paint perfection. 
And again, if this even if this even was a major correction, it still wouldn't be perfect. So no. Good afternoon, what Todd. Hi. Another Bendy Arnage tea. I did actually have to ask if they'd emailed through already because I'm overdue in getting back to my emails and there has been an inquiry for an Arnage tea. So I assume that phone call was them chasing the inquiry, but it's not him. So there's two Arnages inquiring. So I'll certainly be looking for some help on the vehicles because they they're like this big, they're like a small cottage. With that that is gonna be enough it's cleaned up the paint below uh, this stuff it's gonna be etched it's gonna be permanently bare that's not gonna be re removed unfortunately uh, so at least if anything it gives me a marker for the badge to go back on B R and once the rest of the badge this is obviously the old one the new one's gonna be sourced and replaced once the new badge is over the top let's use the fingerprints but that is gonna be bloody marvelous. It's gonna go boom, it's gonna go swoosh, it's gonna go boom. And then this as well, that little 10 mil lip. Uh, in my opinion, it'd be daft, stupid or brave to put a three inch on that ledge, especially in a 19 year old car that's had a lot of paint work. So all this is still yet to be done, just to get an idea of where we're at before we buff the residue. Hybrid, 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 buff it all off. comment on YouTube I saw someone said what is the point of refining you say about refining the paint after the cutting has been done educators what is it why I'll show you before the refining stage I will do a 50 50 refine one half the wing I'll get into it more later because my battery lights flashing and I need to put you on charge Thank you. 
original paint on the door is much different to respond than the painted panels so far. The boot lid and the offside wing, uh, they're actually a lot nicer than the sticky Porsche paint. Three inch down the side and halfway along the bottom has been done. Look how damaged it is from the cutting. So uh, the original paint is a bit softer. It's a bit more prone to being damaged after the cutting. To be honest, maybe I ought to have changed the combination. I'm just running with the same product. Uh, but yes, it is removing the swirls, but it's just more important now to get the correct refining in place. To do a paint correction, it is impossible to do so without, in a sense, damaging the paint itself. You have to cut and dig the damage before you level it off again. I'll touch on that a little later on. Cut and damaged. Refined and glossy. I've just done a test refining on this knee side top of the door just to sort of check that the damage I'm leaving behind. Is this refinable? Is this achievable with the two passes? It really is quite messy there. And as we can see, very much so. I told you it's a beautiful color, but it's just hidden. Hidden behind a sea of swirls. And that blister. That is from rubbing the adhesive off where the box the badger was. And that is the dead skin in remnants from a previous blister from this car. An Audi Q7, new car prep. It said Q7, 55 TFSI Quattro with the chrome Audi rings. Debadged, debadged, replaced with a black. as well as probably wasting a couple of hours on Call of Duty Warzone. That's me playing Xbox.
The last major panel to correct, uh, it's a bit backwards in my process, normally the bonnet is the first panel. Well, you can see, still work in progress, there's a lot of damage in there to pull out. Uh, right hand side has, the bonnet's actually responded probably the better of the rest of the panels so far. It's responded nicely indeed. A good level of correction, that's on a single pass with the wool. Uh, HC 4000 still. See how we get on with these deeper scratches. Also the bird bomb there. I think I've sort of tickled it slightly whilst doing this side. I've overlapped the halfway point and sort of hit that just. Obviously not enough, but give that some more work. A lot more work because that would be a bit of a spoiler if that was left headlights have been sorted bumper sorted rear bumper sorted I've still got the a pillar framework to do and the mirrors and the sills man Another demonstration of how important edge work is. The five inch area has been worked there. The bottom of the bonnet edge, two inches there. Broken, hazy, untouched basically. So as that goes across, the three inch has been on this right hand side. You can see the difference. Clean, tight to the edge, true correction, true minor correction compared to, you usually get lots of fingerprints and scratches and haze here centrally where people reach the bonnet and close it, scratches the paint. started and to come back to you about the refining stage what is it why do you have to deliver two different stages of polishing uh, as some people keep asking it is purely on the basis that when you're digging the defects out you are creating damage yourself the larger abrasives in the polish you're churning chomping through the lacquer to dig out the scratches and the swirls but that itself leaves damage behind if it's not mild enough it's not fine enough abrasive to be able to finish nicely. It is itself uneven on a microscopic level. So the cutting complete, you move on to a lesser aggressive abrasive uh, and a lesser aggressive pad. So a foam pad, a softer pad, uh, and a mild finishing abrasive. In doing so now, you're able to level the paint more. It's literally that, it's just leveling the paint. Paint will always look its best when it's completely flat. delayed, can't be helped. I've had a vehicle dropped off, which is outside, uh, X3 M40D BMW, black sapphire, next week's minor correction. And then I've had a nitrous blue focus RS for a quotation. Looking sharp, everything's now refined, mirrors, A pillars, bumpers. It's ready now for a wipe over with Gion Prep. Over there, ready, give it a once over, get rid of the lint and the dust. 
get the badge back on, and then do some touch-ups. And then this afternoon, I will try and get the interior done, so if anything's left for tomorrow, it's gonna to be the coatings. Uh, tomorrow being Sunday, and then start on the end of it on Monday. Serious surface cleaning cloth currently is pretty clean. Uh, just wiping over the surfaces and door cards. The little wind deflectors at the back, these always get filthy, so look at the state of this when I'm finished. Bear in mind when the roof is down, these are exposed to the elements, so I suppose they just get airborne dirt as opposed to normal cabin interior dust. Not the worst I've seen, to be honest. But still, they get dirty. I know I'll get some stick for my old purposeful dirty buckets, but. The rinse water from the microfiber cloth. This is after just the dashboard, the steering wheel, the center console, the gubbins at the back there, door cards, carpet. Need to do now the actual carpet, the actual floor mats in the actual leather on the seats. I just realized I've not had my dinner. It's half past two. One of them days, 
It's easily done though, to be honest. Uh, unless you sit down for a pop of dinner and bite to eat for half an hour and set aside the time, you just keep working and working and picking and choosing. I'm snacking, but that's, I think, as good as it's going to get today for today's time scales. The third brake light looking tarnished and heavy, flat, but after a quick hand polish, gloss brought back to life quite considerably. Uh, the best way to identify how much better it is, watch the reflection of this light here as we go across. It just almost vanishes, that's how heavy it is. Let me sort that side and I'll do this again. And that should be continuous throughout. Okay, reflection, reflection of the light. Hey, hey.
timing. Sorry about the noise down below. The washing machine is on, and if you wondered why I've worn a baseball cap for the last three vehicles, the last three months actually, it's being sorted on Thursday. <laughs> so that's that. And that is that. Saving a Boxster 2.0, tick. Or shall I title it, saving another Boxster. If you've made it through this far, I thank you for your time. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, just take a second to click that thumbs up or tap, click, smash, whatever you want to do. Click that thumbs up and like the video to help the channel and help the video to go further. If you know of a friend, colleague, family member, loved one, or even a community that may benefit from watching this, if you're part of a Facebook group or community, share the video. Come on, man. Terrible time. Uh, by the way, also the music you're about to hear in the after footage, something unique, something very special and slick. The music is produced, performed by the son of this vehicle. Enjoy. Take your heart from mine Knows I try Let me cut your hair from me Oh, oh, my irony. And I'd have done anything. And I'd have done anything. And I'd have done anything. I'd have done anything to be there, to be there. I'm so ashamed of what I've done, yet so afraid of what's to come. I've done anything.